Hey, welcome to Crossfader. My name is Jamie Hartley, and in this video, we're going to focus on the pad scratch mode on the Pioneer DDJ SB3. There are a few different things that you can do with this mode. I'm going to focus on one or two tricks that you can apply in your DJ sets with this automated scratch feature. It was one of those things when this controller was announced that caused a bit of controversy in the industry. But don't worry, I'm here to help you get hands on with your brand new controller and do some fun stuff with it. Remember, if you enjoy this video, to like, comment, share, subscribe, and do all that good stuff to help us keep making more videos just like this one. Let's get stuck in. For this mixing technique, we're going to look at doing a drop mix and swapping from one song to another while incorporating pad scratch and then eventually applying the echo as well to clean everything up. So this is quite a beginner technique in terms of there are only a few buttons to press. Um, and you don't have to do much mixing. It's more about getting the timing right and pressing the buttons in the right order. Um, but there is still quite a lot to think about. So let's have a look at how we would plan this particular mix. First of all, I have two tracks loaded here. They're both remixes by Felguk. We've got Hands Up for Detroit and Rattle. Now, what I want to do is set up a hot cue for Pad Scratch to work. I'm going to set up a hot cue on the vocal just before the drop in Hands Up for Detroit. Let's have a listen here. Put your hands up for Detroit. A lovely city. So the start of that vocal is ideal for my pad scratch trick. So I'm going to set up a hot cue there. Right on the start of that vocal. Great. And then what I'm going to need to do is jump into the drop of the next song. So if I skip through towards the drop and have a listen. The drop is coming up now. Now what I need to do is set up a hot cue on this drop. However, I'm actually not going to set it on the drop itself. I want a bit of an intro into that drop. So I want to use some of these melodic notes here and actually set my hot cue up here. So this intros the drop quite nicely. Delete and set the hot cue. There we go. So now let's have a listen to how this would sound. First, what we're going to have is the Hands Up For Detroit track playing. So I'm going to skip later on in the song. And then we're going to jump back to the vocal with the pad scratch before dropping straight in to the next song. So the, tra the track's playing, I'd move to pad scratch mode. At the end of the main section, when it gets to the next breakdown, I'm just going to hold the baby scratch pad mode, which is this one, and it will jump back and baby scratch. Now the trick here, I'm going to count for four and then once I get back to number one, I'm going to hold the, I'm sorry, I'm going to press play on the opposite side. So cross fader in the middle, both faders up, all EQs stay up for this one. <laughs> and let's go. One, two, three, four, and play. Two, three, four, and So this hand stays held on the pad scratch. This one presses play and then moves over to just kill the fader. You can either kill the fader or you can press the pause button with your finger, whichever you find easier. Let's skip to that part of the song and prepare it. Let's do that one more time and I won't say anything this time. Jumping towards the second breakdown. and we're into the next song. Now this time we're going to improve upon that and we're going to apply the echo which I've got set up here and it's on a one beat parameter. So I'm going to turn the echo on, fade the level in just as it's getting towards the point where I'm going to press pad scratch and now when I pad scratch <laughs> and fade it down, we get the nice echo out which is quite nice. Or if you're doing it with the pause button, <laughs> it'll create that echo scratch out which is really nice. Let's do this one more time. Start applying the echo. And we're into the next song. So a really simple way to use pad scratch to transition from one song to another. 
A quick bonus tip while we have all of these parameters set up with the echo, you could just apply this piece of vocal over the top of the main section of another song and baby, baby scratch it in, let the vocal play, then go back and baby scratch it and let the vocal play. And then with some effects like the echo, it fills the gaps as well. So that would sound something like this. And for this to work, I'm going to make sure that I jump to a part of the other song, the rattle song, where there's a bit of room in the higher frequencies. So later on in the main drop, if we have a listen, we lose some of the higher frequency sound. So there's a bit of room here now to add in a vocal over the top. So over this section, all I'm going to do is use the pad scratch, let the track play, go back to pad scratch, let the track play. Let's have a listen. And that just fills in that section. Now I held the baby scratch for four beats and let it go for four beats, held it for four beats, let it go for four beats. You'll notice I messed around with the EQs a little bit. What I did there was I took the low frequency out just in case there was anything clashing with the low frequencies over there and just dropped the mid slightly to make room for the vocal. One more time. Let's skip back. before killing the fade around. So there you have it, some quick tricks using the pad scratch mode and then layering in some effects over the top. I hope you've learned some new things in this video that you can apply in your DJ sets. And if you want to learn even more with the Pioneer DDJ SB3, then check out the link for free DJ lesson from our online DJ courses, specifically on this controller. It's a beginner lesson from the beginner course. We have beginner, intermediate and advanced specifically for Serato users and this controller, so make sure to check them out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.